Hello everybody! I wanted to make a quick card for uh, International Women's Day. So that's today, uh, March 8th. Um, and I knew that I had to use the Strong and Beautiful stamp set. Um, there's some amazing sentiments here, so that was kind of on my list. And then I haven't used this lovely Lattice stamp set yet, so I was like, okay, we'll do that. So this lends itself so beautifully to be colored that I kind of had to pick which which method of coloring did I want to use. Um, so I decided I was going to watercolor. So I've kind of got my palette laid out here. I've got Daffodil Delight, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape, Pear Pizzazz, and Old Olive. And we're going to watercolor this. So I'm going to need my blender pen and some watercolor paper. Now, before I do this, I'm going to just grab a scrap sheet of paper out of my printer, which I should have done beforehand. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So I've got my embossing buddy. If you don't have an embossing buddy, um, you can also just use like a nylon that's filled with cornstarch. And this just takes off some of the static and will help your embossing powder just stay where it needs to stay. So I'm going to kind of rub that all over. And then I'm going to take my big floral image here and my Versamark, ink that up. And stamp it on my watercolor piece here, my watercolor paper. I'm going to put it kind of in the middle and towards the top because I do want to fit the sentiment in there. Now I can't really see where that is so I'm just going to put some embossing powder on here so that I can start to see where my images are and this is where this paper comes in really handy because I can just dump it on there and then dump it all back into my little container here. Now I like to kind of flick, and it does get the embossing powder everywhere, but this uh, sheet of paper is going to make the cleanup a little bit easier. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of that extra. Now I've got my other sentiment here, or my sentiment rather, and I'm going to stamp this just in the middle here. And I'm going to emboss that too. I can do this all at once, so I might as well. go. Okay, let's get most of this back in the container here. All right, I'm going to throw this off to the side here. I've only made a bit of a mess. Okay, so now we're going to have to heat this up to melt that embossing powder. Not the quietest. And you can start to see when it starts to melt, that powder will actually go shiny. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's just starting with the sentiment there. sure that all of that gets melted. Now I don't know if this is just me being a little obsessive but I like to give it a run from behind too and I find that that flattens the paper out a bit. Okay we are done with that noisy thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray this down with my spritzer and that's just going to get that paper a little bit wet doesn't have to be soaked I just want it a little bit wet so that the ink moves around a bit. Now with the ink pads all I've done is I've closed them, squished them a bit and that's gotten the ink onto the cover like that. So I've done that with all of my ink pads. I've got a bit of a rag here as well um, that I can wipe it off on. So I'm going to start with my lighter colors. I'm going to start with my Highland Heather and I'm just going to start adding some color to my flowers. And you can see because the paper is wet, 
it actually kind of follows the water, which is exactly what I want it to do. And then you'll see as it dries, how it stays more just where I actually paint it. And there's actually a lot of little flowers in this picture. There's these little guys up here, these little guys over here. And if it goes a little bit out of the lines, that's fine. I do want that kind of painterly look. And I'm not squeezing the barrel of my aqua painter at all. I'm just kind of letting the ink in the water pull and do all the work. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna move on to my leaves. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the pear pizzazz. And I'm gonna just hit all of my little leaves and stems. And you can see there it's a little bit drier, so the ink is kind of more just staying right where I brush it. And that's okay too. These ones are very dry over here. If it's too dry, you can always hit it again with the spritzer, but I'm just gonna go with it for right now. Okay, I think I got all my leaves. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back with my darker colors. And now you see how it's really dry. So actually I do wanna hit, hit it with the spritzer again. And you can see that that starts to blend. So this is a gorgeous grape. And I just wanna kinda hit in the middle and like under other petals, kind of wherever I want it to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna add in some of that gorgeous grape. Yeah, it just only needs a bit more water on there. There we go. And you can see kind of how that pulls it out. And the nice thing with it being embossed is that it'll pretty much stay in those lines because there's actually a little bit of a raised area at the lines. It, the water pretty much stays wherever you put it. I can actually go back with some of the Highland Heather in here. Blend this out a little bit so that there's not quite as much white. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my yellow, my Daffodil Delight, and I'm just gonna paint the centers and the stems, or the stamens of the flowers. That's what I think those, those little lines are. And it's not gonna be super obvious on all of them, but I'm just gonna add that other little color. Okay, and now last but not least, the old olive. I'm gonna add that bit of dimension to the leaves. So I'm just adding that darker color to the leaves. And those stems too. I keep forgetting that there's the little stems in here too. Alrighty, there we go. All right, so now I have to let this dry. And because nobody wants to watch ink dry, I have a finished one here already. So that one's dry already. Now, I didn't add the sentiment yet to this. So I don't have to emboss it now that it's um, 
now that it's dry, I can I could actually use the memento, but I'm going to add a different sentiment after. So we're just going to go with this for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my trick for attaching watercolor paper. And this works with other kinds of paper as well. I just like it for watercolor paper because it tends to, after you've had water on there, curl the corners up like this. So snail just is not strong enough. So what we're going to do, um, first of all, I'm going to put a ribbon around there. I just need to find the right one here. What did I do with it? I had my polka dot ribbon. All right, we'll use this one. It's the same ribbon. This is just a new pack. And I got this idea from Tamara. I wanted to put this ribbon around. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this ribbon around, and I think I'm going to do it across the bottom. Tamara had it on the side, but I like it across the bottom. And then I'm going to do my little, whoo, oh, that made a mess. Um, I'm going to put my little glue dot where I want the bow to be. If you watch some of my paper pumpkin videos, you've probably seen me do that. Alrighty. And we're just going to tie this around and then see how I've got that glue dot there. I'm just going to put that right down on the glue dot. And then when I tie my bow, it's going to stay right where I have that glue dot. Helps to have the roll on the right side. Okay, and now I'm going to fluff this up. This one, like I said, I'm going to add a different sentiment to. So I'll add that afterwards. Okay. Now we've got our little tails here. Now with this ribbon, what I really like to do is I like to pull it the other direction. So if you're pulling it this direction, it's kind of narrowed itself out. So if you pull it crossways like this, it fluffs up really nicely. And it's just because it's kind of that netting that it uh, it's kind of sensitive to which directions you pull it in. There we go. Okay, now on to my watercolor paper trick. So we are going to just put a strip of tear and tape across all four sides. This trick works really well too. If you have trouble lining up your layers, um, a lot of people, even if you've got like a tremor or something like that, and even if you don't, um, another challenge I found some people, if you've got bifocals, it's kind of hard. Um, it's a weird distance that we're crafting at and uh, you end up not being able to line things up very well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this halfway off and we're gonna create this little dog leg in the paper that we're putting on, pulling off the back of the double-sided tape. And now when we go to put it on our card front, it's actually just going to kind of float above. And then all we have to do is once we've got it lined up where we want it, you tack it down. And it's only going to tack down in those corners that you have the paper pulled off already. But now you can pull the rest of the paper out and it's actually going to sit right there. So that is the front of the card. For the inside, I'm just going to use my snail. Did cheat a little bit. I had this cute tiny little flower that's in this stack set as well. So I'm just going to add a bit of tear and tape to the back of this as well. And we're going to stick this on the inside of the card because it's so cute. And I just couldn't say no. Alrighty. Where should we put this? We'll put it in the bottom corner here. Alrighty. There we are. So we've got the front of our card and the inside of our card. Like I said, I'm probably going to add a sentiment to this, um, but I can just pop it up over the ribbon. Or actually, you know what? I kind of like it without the sentiment too. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. All right. Enjoy. If you need any supplies, 
you can go to my website, thecraftymedic.com, and follow the shop link if you've got your phone handy too. You can point your camera at that. That will take you straight to my online shop. And then you're gonna want to use the host code there. So what this will do is it'll add all of our orders together um, and uh, I'll send out some of the rewards. I'll send it back out to you so you'll get some free goodies from me. Celebration's still on. This is actually a celebration set, this lovely lattice. It has three stamps in it, the big image there and the little one, and then it has a little border as well. So if you spend $60 or more, and that's in Canada, if you spend $60 or more, you can pick that stamp set for free. And if you spend $65 or more, you will also get my tutorial bundle. So this month we've actually got 12 different tutorials in there. So it's an awesome, awesome bundle um, from demonstrators from around the world. All right, enjoy. Happy watercoloring.